folks for for um those who who don't know um like i said my name is mark levine i'm a lot less famous than jason raz but that's okay it's Barnes. not about famous or matt bar right here former nba star because you're not um, um because yeah. i'm a lot shorter than, than, than he, this guy um but um I do, though, have a very important job. I am one of 100 members of the Virginia House of Delegates, and we have an election in Virginia on Tuesday. Uh, and uh, that election could change history. As I said, we're 400 years old. We've never had a progressive majority. Virginia's always been conservative. It was conservative under segregation of Democrats. It's been conservative under Republicans for the last 25 years. But now we can have a progressive majority. And that means that... Give us 51 Democrats. We have we have 49 Democrats out of 100, so we're this close. We need a majority. The Republicans gerrymandered it, so it need, we kind of need about 56% of the vote in order to get 50. But I think we're going to do it this Tuesday. If we do that, come January, this soon, January, February, we will pass the Equal Rights Amendment. Uh, I will pass one of those Yay. votes. Um, and like I said, I can show the room. Um, just give an idea of the folks that are, that are, that are in the room. Wave hello everybody. This is this is this is very um you can see I'm not an Instagram expert. Oh, oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. All right, all right, see, see. There you go. This shows you just shows you yeah, no, no, no. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I I appreciate that. Uh, anyway, we are waiting for Jason Mraz to join us and then hopefully this will be shared on his uh, his um, um, account and all. But anyway, it's really important. And one of the reasons we're here is not uh, magic to so everybody. So we're... Jason Mraz, who has just joined us. That is fantastic. Let me add him. Invite him to join us. That is really cool. And uh, he's joining us now. Um, so Jason, I guess Jason can hear me now, but he's, I guess he has to join us. He has to push a button to join us. Uh, and uh, there he is. Well, at least something's hey, there. Hey, Jason. What? I think you're covering is... up your, uh, your, your screen. I'm not. There you are. Uh-huh. Man, it's so uh, there you are. I, I mean, Almost. Can you hear me? Everyone, take a look. There's Jason Mraz, at least a vague form of him. <laughs> can you hear me? You can't hear him. Yeah, now you can. Now you can. There are limits to that Everybody. Yes, there are limits to that magic. Everybody. Jason. Hey, so, buddy. How you doing, man? Thanks so much. Hey, for Richard. Doing this. Can you guys hear me? Jason, I hear you fine. Good. Really appreciate your 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 image is a little vague. It's it's a little. I think you're fuzzy. buffering. You're a little fuzzy, Jason. But, but he's handsome enough to make you. You are. Way. You're better looking than I am, even fuzzy. So that works. That works well. Um, Jason, thank you for doing this. I know you're a, you're a native uh, Virginian. I am. Mm -hmm. I am from the Richmond area, right? Virginia. Yeah, yeah, mechanical <laughs> Virginia originally. <laughs> And really appreciate your helping us out. So for folks who don't know, there's an election on Tuesday, and Jason has been really helpful to a lot of our candidates. So I don't know whether you, you got a guitar with you or something, Jason, or you just... I do. A, I do. I do. Look at that. Show on your guitar. You get lots of hearts for your guitar, of course. Yeah. And, uh, oh, and, and I'm much lesser known. I'm Virginia State Delegate Mark Levine. Uh, I'm just here as Jason's friend. No, I'm here because we have an election on Tuesday where if the Democrats win, uh, we will have a progressive majority. We'll pass the Equal Rights Amendment. We'll do some really good uh, laws to restrict guns, which are way too prevalent in Virginia. We'll raise the minimum wage, do something about climate change finally, which will help the folks out in California. A uh, whole host of things. And, and the, the main reason that we're here is uh, a bill of mine uh, called the National Popular Vote Bill, which would allow people to elect uh, the president directly instead of going through the Electoral College, which is what got Donald Trump there. I'm going to stop talking because they don't, didn't come to see me, Jason. Um, I don't know if you want to sing for us or tell us what, what you think about all this. And what he's doing in Virginia. Sure. Um, well, hopefully you can hear me. I'm, I'm sitting in a corridor as close to... The, the outside world as possible. I'm in Eugene, Oregon on tour. Uh, I've been through two different Wi-Fi devices and I'm trying to get a good signal to reach you guys here today. 
but I do have my guitar in hand because I'm on tour at the moment. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Can you guys still hear me? Say yay. Oh, yeah, we hear you fine. I'm just showing some of the people in the room. Go ahead. Cool. Can you hear my guitar? Absolutely. Can you sing us about Virginia or something? Well, I just have a lot of questions in general, and I always tell young artists to write about what they know, write about whatever's going on in their life. So whether that's a breakup or they've learned a new life lesson and... Of course, right now, in today's climate, there's a whole lot going on in the headlines. So I can't help but find myself writing about my own personal life questions and how I fit into today's politics and ever-changing, chaotic environment. And I try to look for the good, but sometimes songs come up that are just filled with questions. Like, uh, for example... What's it going to be for the future of America? Another four years of a Twitter tyrant scaring you? More billionaires getting much more wealthier? Can't we get some health care and make our country healthier? Can't we get that Green New Deal and regenerate? Can't we lose our student loan debt and freely educate? Can't we use some changes in the way we choose to separate that's proven in the colors of the humans we incarcerate? Can't we see that love is still the only way to combat hate? Empathy begets is to become someone compassionate exercise your freedom anarchy or activism vote louder vote louder louder than your voice can get uh. vote louder november 5th uh, in virginia especially vote so, Mark, I've got a handful of songs now that are armed and ready for All right. a political revolution, man. That sounds good. And there's actually elections in Kentucky, Mississippi, New Jersey, and Louisiana, also on November 5th. But in Virginia, we're the only state that can flip from Republican to Democratic. So folks in Virginia really need to get out and vote. And frankly, if you want to help our efforts, uh, if you can, go to M-A-R-K for delegate, M-A-R-K-F-O-R-D-E-L-E-G-A-T-E. If you donate now, every penny will go to the most competitive Democratic races. Um, but there's a whole bunch of things we're going to do. It's not just equal rights amendment and, and guns. We're going to help people vote because they make it really hard for young people to vote. And we're going to make it a lot yeah. for them. And then, of course, we got to get rid of that tyrant in the White House. And right. the only reason he got in power in the first place is this stupid electoral college. And as you know, Hillary Clinton beat Donald Trump by more than three million votes, and yet he became president because of this, you know, this old part of the U.S. Constitution. So we got to fix that. Yeah, you're going to help us. So, speak. Mark, Mark, tell me how tell me how this election can help fix uh, gerrymandering so that we can determine that constituents in their districts are getting to choose their their representative fairly, that they're getting to vote fairly. How do we eliminate gerrymandering through this next election? Well, gerrymandering is actually tougher. We can, we can fo focus on electoral college. Gerrymandering, we just had a U.S. Supreme Court decision that basically said, and I disagree with it, but said gerrymandering is okay. A terrible 5-4 decision that they just ruled on this year, which makes it really, really hard. What we can do, though, we can encourage states to do something that I support called the wasted vote model it's kind of complex but basically what it does is it says that you you more people get to choose their elected representatives and some states have independent commissions uh there are lots of different ways to do that we might do that in virginia but that gerrymandering is a tough one because um uh, you're right that uh you know people who who people like me shouldn't be choosing my districts it should be the people out there who, who decide, and they should be fair, they should be based, I'll tell you something, in Virginia, just to give you an example, we have, in 2017, Democrats got 55% of the vote, we only got 49 out of 100 seats, because of the, the way the lines were drawn, so we need we need to have fairer lines, and that's a battle in every state in the United States, but it's definitely a battle here in Virginia. So we brought up another good point in that you said this was a Supreme Court decision recently, that was 5-4, and I know that the next president, uh, the next presidential term is likely going to choose another Supreme Court or seat. Or two or three. Or <laughs> two or three. So making sure you have compassionate, progressive leadership. And what I mean by progressive leadership are, are people who are willing to help create, restore a government by and for the people. 
the current agenda seems that it's every man for himself. Therefore, the rich get richer. The capitalism is unfettered. Whereas if you can get progressive leadership that cares about all citizens of the United States, then perhaps we can even elect compassionate, progressive uh, Supreme Court justices Absolutely. in the next term, too, which will help protect a lot of uh, Supreme Court decisions of the past that, that have gotten us to the current, the amount of rights that we do have today. You know, one of the problems we have is that we shouldn't have the U.S. Supreme Court choosing our president. I remember back in 2000 when the people elected Al Gore. Uh, he won the popular vote. He won the electoral vote. But the United States Supreme Court said, we're not going to count the votes of Florida. We're going to put George Bush in there. And then just recently, as you know, Hillary Clinton won that election by three million votes. The people in California voted. Are they not Americans? Do they not get a count? But they didn't count them because of this electoral college, which comes from the U.S. Constitution. And this is basically, I got, I got one in front of me. I carry it wherever I go. Probably can't read it on there. But um, the electoral college was designed 200 odd years ago by a bunch of people that wanted white men with property and that means not not women and not people without property and certainly not non-white people um to control everything and it was before parties and whatever you think of when it was written it definitely doesn't belong there now it's just not democratic the people chose hillary clinton the people should get the president they want so one of the things we're going to do here in virginia if we get 51 democrats on november 5th is i'm introducing a bill called the national popular vote bill and what this bill does is we don't need to have a constitutional amendment. It's really hard to change the Constitution. You need two-thirds of the House, two-thirds of the Senate, three-quarters of all the state legislatures. Really hard to do that. But what we can do through this National Popular Vote Compact is we can join with other states throughout the United States. And if enough of us representing 270 electoral votes agree, we can go around the old Electoral College and interestingly, there's already 16 states in D.C. that have done this. We actually already have 196 of the 270 we need. We can add Virginia's 13 electoral votes and get to 209, just be 61 away. That's a lot of math. The heart of it is this. If you help us in Virginia, I'm going to give the website one more time, markfordelegate.com, M-A-R-K-F-O-R-D-E-L-E-G-A-T-E.com. Click the donate button. If you can give us to help us in Virginia, we can come st the way to helping the whole nation finally be able to choose their president where the most votes counts. And that's the only fair way to choose the democracy. Whereas you're a hero for helping bring this issue to people's attention because a lot of people don't know about this. Most people don't know about it. Yeah, well, I, I think it's it's definitely worth exploring, worth asking about. You know, there's an argument that says, you know, if we didn't have an electoral college, then candidates would only campaign in New York and California where where the population is the most dense. Um, what what would that we're not saying we're doing away with the electoral college. What we're saying what what you're suggesting is that each state is going to give its electoral votes to the uh, candidate that that state voted for by populace. Right. No, I'm saying that actually the whole nation, we count every vote in the entire nation, and the states and the compacts would give their electoral votes to whoever wins the national popular vote. To the national popular vote. The national popular vote. So you're right that candidates would campaign in New York and L.A. Frankly, they don't campaign in New York and L.A. right now, because today, unless you live in New Hampshire or, or Ohio or Iowa, you, you don't get to be part of the process. It's not just liberal states. If you live in Texas or Oklahoma or Idaho or Wyoming, you don't get to be part. This way, every single person counts. And it's not just the folks in the cities. There's a lot of rural America out there, and their votes count too. So we need candidates that appeal to everybody, to the whole of this diverse country, and not just a few people in select states. So it, Got it. it is for the national popular vote. You know, in the vast majority of democracies on the planet... The person with the most votes wins. It's kind of how you just, I don't know of any student council race where the second place finisher wins. That doesn't make any sense. And frankly, I don't think we would have had this racist, abusive, corrupt president we have right now if the American people had been allowed to choose our choice rather than this old electoral college choice, which whatever use it had went out hundreds of years ago. If I can add something, Jason, that it, it used to be that the thinking was, oh, we have to protect small states or we have to protect the rural states. And what Mark is saying is true. There really are two classes of citizenship in this country. 
There are people who happen to live in swing states like Ohio and Iowa and Florida and, and Michigan and Wisconsin, and then everyone else. So what that means is approximately 44 or 45 states have no voice and only five or six. So that's way worse than the rural versus the urban areas. We really don't have equal protection and equal voting, and there, we need to go to a one-person, one-vote. My dream, and this is how I want people to think about this, is that the last person voting, an 18-year-old man or woman who is in Honolulu, Hawaii, who is the last person to vote in the 2020 election can decide who the president is. That's incredibly exciting and empowering. And we can do that if we pass Mark's bill in Virginia and then get 61 more. So, Jason, I yeah. really want to sing about this or something. I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's, it's really about e equal. Every person's vote counting equal to every other person's vote, which I think is what this country is supposed to be about. It is supposed to be about that. And um, I, I think, you know, from my perspective, too, you people turn off their listening if uh, because they're party oriented. They only want to be on a party or and. Um, and I'm, I feel a little, um, uh, I've been a little frustrated myself the last couple of elections with party, um, quarreling and the power brokers within each party, uh, sir, uh, just making sure each party can, can maintain their power. And so this election, especially, um, I've just been looking at issues. I've, I'm going to vote for issues. I don't care what side of the aisle they're on. Uh, and and even in next year's presidential race, I don't feel like I'm voting for a party. I feel like I'm voting for Bernie Sanders. And that he, to me, does not feel like your typical Democratic Party establishment or any party establishment. I feel like it's gone back to equal rights for all citizens and having the type of progressive leadership that cares about um, – you know, ratifying the Equal Rights Amendment, uh, gun control, health care, um, uh, doing something, acknowledging there's a climate crisis, let alone trying to solve it with new technologies. But to at least have a candidate and or a party back that person that says we do have a climate crisis and we should be investing in new energies so that we can all get on board with it and be a leader in the world, not not someone behind or one of the major pollutants. Um, uh, these are all the types of things that are on my mind. I guess, Jason, forward. I, I just say this, because um, I've been watching a lot of Democratic debates, and Bernie certainly does a very good job in those debates. I'll tell you this, any of them, Bernie, Elizabeth, Joe, Pete, Kamala, uh, uh, I have like Cory Booker, uh, I know a lot of them, Amy Klobuchar, the differences among them, while they're real, are tiny compared to the difference mm -hmm. between them and the current occupant of the White House. So, totally, and, totally. You know, we all have our favorite candidates in the primary. My rule is I will vote for a venomous toad over anybody, Donald Trump. Anybody, anybody, anybody. Uh, uh, right. Because the venomous totally. toad would do a lot less damage. Totally. Now, I, I understand why people voted for him, because I feel like the establishment wasn't listening to every citizen in the U.S. And so most, you know, almost half the citizens in the U.S. that did vote, I mean, a fraction of citizens even voted, period. Um, is one of those reasons. Because yeah. they don't and, vote counted. No, no, it's the young people. We got yeah, they didn't feel like they counted. Um, they, and so they went with this other idea, like, hey, let's do something to shake up politics and, 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 and elect this uh, reality show guy who seems like a wheeler and dealer. And then Unfortunately, they've been let down by him, and many, many people have been let down through his bigotry, his racist remarks, through his fear, through his narcissism, um, through his foreign dealings. Um, I mean, so much of it has put our safety, our health, our welfare at, at risk. Uh, so, But the good thing is, if I can look for the good in all of this, it's that a political re revolution has be begun. More people are awake. More people want to know. Tell me more about the Virginia elections in on November fifth in twenty nineteen. You know, how how can I run for office in twenty twenty? More people are getting involved, and we're seeing not only a blue wave but a new wave of young people getting involved. And that to me is very very exciting. And that's the kinds of things that I'm tuned into that I'm looking forward to voting for. And as a songwriter, 
looking forward to express so that I can provide the kind of musical uh, landscape to support these marches, these revolutions, um, these new ways of thinking and ways of being, because every citizen needs the courage to stand up and act and be a part of the process. So let me give you an example of what we've done in Virginia already. Um, two mm -hmm. years ago, we only had 34 Democrats, about a third out of 100. And two years ago in 2017, just after Donald Trump came to power, we flipped 15 seats. Now, of the 15 new members we got, 11 were women. Uh, we have the first Latina in Virginia history, the first Asian American woman uh, in, in Virginia history. Uh, we have the first transgendered woman, actually Danica Rome, who I've mentored uh, in Virginia history, the first lesbian woman. Um, we are changing uh, we, we're now almost equal gender parity of the Democrats. The Republicans have no blacks uh, and and I think four women out of 50 some odd. Uh, we, we represent Virginia. They represent a very small class of Virginia. And so we've already brought in this diversity. And I'll tell you something else. We have more millennials. We have a lot of our new people are in their 20s and 30s, people who are running for the first time. And this is the, and a lot of candidates in Virginia right now on the ballot are diverse. They're younger. They're, they're men and women. They're, they're uh, all races and genders. And uh, a lot of people who, are, who are, grew up very poor are running as well. We have our first socialist. You'll appreciate that. Bernie Sanders will appreciate that. My colleague Lee Carter joined us two years ago. Uh, our first socialist member of the Virginia House of Delegates. So we we are the party of diversity. So I would just say this. Um, I know some people don't like party labels, and people are individuals, and you got to look at the individual candidate. But I would say that among Democrats, we have a lot of diversity in America, and I don't see that among Republicans. So I, I must admit, I'm a Democrat. I'm pushing Democrats. But if Republicans would represent all of America... I think they get more votes, but they don't do that, mm -hmm. right? I want to introduce uh, Matt Barnes, former NBA star. Matt, he's awesome uh, with us. The Lakers, the Clippers, and he's got a ring from the Golden State Warriors. And oh, amazing. Importantly, if not more so, he was very involved in getting a bill passed in Sacramento on social justice and criminal justice. And we're really glad to have him here with us, Matt. Say hi, Jason. How you doing, my man? Incredible. Hey, Matt. How you doing, man? I think you hit it on the head where you, uh, you know, the one thing that we can take from Trump is he woke a lot of people up and brought a lot of people together. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that's the key. And, 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 and getting this passed in Virginia, I think, is important because we don't feel our voice matters. So a lot of people say, why vote? You know what I mean? And yeah. the new millennials, as talented as they are, they're, they're, you know, any, any, I'll, I'm about to be 40. Even people my age, we're just, you know, it, it gets lazy, especially if you don't feel like you're doing something that's going to, you know, in result of something positive. So I think, you know, the new wave and his, his, his new, what is it called? The, the national popular vote. I mean, if, if vote. we knew that our voice, our vote and our voice matter, it, it, we can yeah. change the world with that. And oh, I yeah. I think More people would show us to vote. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and oddly enough. A lot of athletes are, you know, involved and interested. We just don't know where to start and, you know, and where to go and, and how to really educate ourselves because our life is moving so fast with everything else, but realizing and, and slowing down that, you know, politics is a huge part of our lives as well. So, you know, this is something you know, I retired from the NBA two years ago, no, no, three years now, uh, when I won a championship with the Warriors and, and, and just kind of really understanding everything else that's going on uh, around me. And, you know, I, I've really been talking to a lot of uh, friends of mine. I, I mentioned to Richard on the way here that um, I'm going to reach out to John Wall and Bradley Beal, who played for the Wizards, who are good friends of mine, and you know, kind of educate them a little bit on this and see if they can, you know, do some social media posting for us as well, just to kind of get the word out there. Because, like I said, I'm done playing, and I didn't really know about this, so I can only imagine that these guys have no clue of, of what's really going on and how important next Tuesday is. So, if if you live in Virginia or um, actually. Kentucky, Mississippi, Louisiana, New Jersey. You can vote on November 5th, and you should vote. The reason I'm talking about Virginia is because, obviously, uh, Virginia is more likely to flip from, from Republican to Democratic. We are 400 years old in Virginia. We've been around since the House of Burgesses in Jamestown, 1819. We've never had a real progressive majority. And this mm. would give us a chance to do that for the first time in 400 years. And here's what I really like about this, for those of you who aren't big fans of the president, and I'm certainly not one of them. We are the only election between now 
and the impeachment of Donald Trump. Donald Trump is going to be impeached by the United States House of Representatives before Christmas. Wow. There's going to be a trial in the Senate next January and February. There's a number of Republicans who will decide whether or not this corrupt lunatic remains in office. Um, they have said quietly, and I talk to Republicans privately all the time, they know he's corrupt, they know he's terrible, they know he, but they're afraid the people support him. If we do really well in Virginia and these other states, but particularly Virginia because it's a purple state, and we show a lot of Democratic support, what we do is we actually give courage to these Republicans who want to do the right thing, who want to follow the Constitution, but are afraid that Donald Trump has too much support. So it's really important if you live in Virginia, if you get out and vote. If you don't live in Virginia, if you can help us with our ad campaign, we've got about 12 or 15 candidates that are really, really tight races. You can donate. I give every penny away to these competitive Democrats. Uh, just one more time, Mark for Delegate, M-A-R-K-F-O-R Delegate dot com. Click on donate, whatever you can give. It's really appreciated. There's a Washington Post article today. These are the most expensive races in Virginia history. The National Rifle Association gave two hundred thousand dollars to oppose us. This one rich billionaire in Illinois gave half a million dollars to a single candidate. I'm not expecting that from the folks here, but you can give five or ten or fifteen dollars, whatever you can do. One of the things actually I want to do if we get in charge is actually put limitations so we don't have rich people right. controlling the process. And that's actually one of my bills that I'm going to put in if, if we get elected. And, and you're part of helping us do that. Jake. Tell what happened two years ago with the one vote. Oh, yeah. So if you, you can read it, you can Google it up there. Two years ago, um, poor Shelley Simons, my friend Shelley Simons, a delegate uh, down at, uh, in the um, Hampton Roads area of Virginia, uh, she won by one vote. We were very proud of her. The count of the votes, she wins by one vote. We were all praising her, talking about landslide Shelley. And then um, the day after they declared her victory, the Republicans found a vote that hadn't been counted. And they said, look, this, this one, which had a bunch of crossouts in it and everything struck out, this is a Republican vote. And then judges chosen by the Republican delegate running against Shelley said, yeah, we're going to count this vote. And that made it a tie. And then they pulled the name out of a bowl and oh, wasn't yeah. Shelley's name. Oh, one name. And oh. that's the reason why we are a minority in the Virginia House of Delegates today with only 49 because Shelley's vote. So every, counted. seriously, every freaking vote. Every vote counts. If every Shelley vote. had gotten two more votes, you know, it's easy maybe to manufacture one vote. We have to win beyond the margin of cheating. And that means everyone has to get out and vote. And repeat the other states where people, because Jason, you have fans who live in New Jersey and Mississippi, Kentucky, Louisiana, Louisiana. And Kentucky. Right. If we had a tidal wave of Blue. young progressive voters, let's show Mitch McConnell in Kentucky that he is in deep trouble. And he year. might change his mind on right? impeachment. And the other thing is that young, young people are voting. You know, um, people mention that young people don't vote. That's traditionally true. But in 2017 in Virginia, Young people came out like they never have before. Right. In 2018, in the midterms, young people are voting like they never have before. I think people, millennials, 20s, 30s, if you're 18 and you can vote, show those older than you that you care, and they will listen to you. Otherwise, only to listen to people that are in their 70s and 80s because they're voting. You have okay. rights, too. You want maybe college to be more affordable. You don't want student loans to be so expensive. You want housing to be more affordable. You want the minimum wage to be higher. There are a lot of issues that young people care about. Paid family legalizing medical leave. Legalizing yeah. marijuana, which, by the way, I support. There's a whole bunch of issues. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of issues. <laughs> and, and, and Matt is in the cannabis business. Say, oh, okay. I didn't even know that. Yeah. I'm working with UCLA on... Uh, um, Studying this life from head to toe and trying to change the regulations of professional sports. So, so I don't know. Jay, we've talked well, a lot, Jason. Yeah. I don't know if you want to say some more or sing some, maybe well, for also, people to sing. Well, also, I'm living in Washington, in Virginia. If anyone's near, you know, nearby. Yeah, if you live near Virginia, you can absolutely help us. But let's play some or get your friends in Virginia to vote, even if you don't live there. It's all you, Jay. Check it out. World 
World War III might be truth versus TV. Yeah, it's hard to know the story if it's owned by private media. Blu-rays blasting through these radioactive screens. We have paid for commercials of the pills to make us sleepy. World War III won't be nuclear catastrophe. It won't be an extreme religious radical shout out of blasphemy. It won't even make it to the news in this country. The war that is poverty versus those who have the money. If corporations played along and put back in their dividends, then currency would remain in the current and flow back to the deficit. If everyone played fair and just, everyone would benefit. One more thing, then I'll shut up. Mark for delegate. <laughs> Dot com. Dot com. <laughs> they are kidding. <laughs> By the way, none of them are supposed to be I love that, Mark. Thank you so much for Needs putting that, for forwarding that money to Democrats that are in really tight really. races, man. Every that's penny. A, that's really noble and uh, generous of you. Every penny. Is he friends with Thank Taylor? you, Jason. Have a great show tonight. Taylor Swift. To really appreciate too. your support. Let's yeah. let's give a let's give a big hand to Jason Mraz. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the time. Good luck, Mark, and we'll spread the word about the November 5th elections. You're the best, Jason. Thank, uh, thank you. Really, you, brother. Really you got it. Appreciate it. Thanks again. Take care. You got it. I don't know where I've been. Wow.